Hey. It's 4 a.m. We're back at the peak, Pike's yeah, Peak. Here. Today we're a test with Romain Dumas testing. They rented the mountain. He's driving for Champion Porsche. And we're gonna get him driving it for the first time up Pike's Peak. It's cold. A little bit. First Pike's Peak? First time of the mountain. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> I hope I don't pass it out. He's not, he's not ready. <laughs> <laughs> this should be fun. We are at... Uh... Lewis is knocking. Oh, Lewis. Sorry. Open. He's trying to vlog. Stop knocking. Trying to vlog over here. I've been stuck outside for five hours. I was Sir. worried about you. Where oh have you been? <laughs> okay, so we are monitoring the Pikes Peak channels. It is 4.30 right now. We're waiting to get up. They're actually gonna open the front gates here to America's mountain and then when we get through they're gonna set up the car they're gonna unload we're gonna get some shots of that but most importantly most importantly Leaf what's the most important thing uh, I don't know Leaf, I'm getting photos <laughs> Leaf is not is this a trick question because he's only had an hour of sleep Oh yeah. Um, don't no cameras, sir. No cameras. <laughs> what about Luis? I'm doing okay. Most important thing is grabbing toilet paper. Yeah. A little bit. Oh yeah, we That's need that. <laughs> we can't show that part on camera. I mean, we can't show why we need it. But uh, yeah, the most important thing is for us to kind of plan everything out and make sure we get the shots we need. This is. Uh, That's what I was gonna say. This is pretty stressful. It, you know, we we get very few attempts at what we're trying to get, which is photos, obviously, of Romaine driving this vehicle. So, yeah, we'll push hard. It's 45 degrees right now. But according to uh, the weather station up there, it's like 28 up there. So we'll see how cold it is. Back at the mountain, got some media vests. Gonna get go back in the car, and we're gonna go back up to the starting line. Interesting. All right, so cars unloaded. Jeez, it looks so good. Now this is a serious time attack car. Um, the interesting thing about this is it's a reflective, so that's why I have my new Canon EL1 flash on, and it shoots all the way down to like one eight thousandths power just to get a little splash of light so should be fun to use this thing So I just wanted to give you guys an update. Unfortunately, there is ice on the ground and snow past Glen Cove, which is that toll booth area. So we have to shoot the bottom section, which is fine. It's just not ideal. It's not picturesque as um, like uh, it is above tree line, above 12,000 feet. But uh, we'll just make the most of it. You know, I'll shoot in the trees, no problem. I, I really wanted to go up to Devils and kind of get that really iconic rocky area look but um you know what we'll, we'll we'll take what we can get so we're gonna get into position and then we'll play by ear from there all right just wanted to give you guys an update i uh haven't been rolling unfortunately when i'm shooting because as soon as we got here it's just such a scramble 
We got three shots already. He did three runs up to Glen Cove, which is the uh, checkpoint. So then now I'm gonna make sure I'm rolling while I'm shooting, but we're gonna go up. We're gonna pick up Lewis, reposition him, and then we're gonna reposition ourselves. About to make a new minivan record. Shit, dude. Oh shit. It's really slippery, dude. Copy. It's crazy. It's crazy. I've never seen so much snow up here. Look at this. This is just insane. It's it's pretty cold too. But luckily it's not too windy. Just shot here 60 mile right below Devil's Playground, right around Evo's corner here, and then we're gonna move down. I'm already feeling it, but uh, gotta get a variety of shots. Going down, we're here. It's Luis's first time, he's feeling the altitude, but uh, he's finally doing some runs up the hill all the way or not all the way up to 60 mile up to devil's playground problem is there's ice on the ground still there's ice on the ground still so he's like taking it really easy on these movements because if he hits that ice he will sweat out for sure sorry my lips are frozen uh yeah we'll uh see we're we're well above the clouds here so we'll, we'll see how many runs we can get um, they shut it down at 8 30 so hopefully we can get some nice rolling shots after they shut it down okay just wanted to give you guys in a little update on what we're working with here in terms of gear thing is normally i would try to shoot all fixed lenses but because we're so limited we have to have to have to get a shot uh, i'm actually running my 3514 i'm running my uh, 7200 and I'm also running over 28, so I'm running three 1DX3 bodies. Now I don't have to change uh, lenses at all. This area, I'm getting a padding shot, then a hairpin shot here with a 7200, and then as soon as it goes around here, I switch to the 400, and then that way I can get like a nice long shot with the city in the background and the snow. Crazy thing is you can see there's black ice here, but he knows, so he, he actually slows down a lot before he hits that. But this is a great shot because I usually get a nice shot of his face uh, because the light is going right into the cockpit right here.
moving. Watch out for him though. Watch out for him. Something happened with the car. We're not able to do rolling shots. We're not able to do beauty shots. So I'm gonna go down to the parking lot and finish up. I really wanted to get the shot with uh, icicles here. I I was I was just so ready to get that icicle shot, but uh, yeah. I got one. It's not that good, but it's something. Uh, okay, so we're heading down. We're gonna do a shoot down at the start line, which is such a bummer. I really wanted to do rolling shots. I was looking forward to that. I've done it one time last year when we were shooting with triple zero. And luckily we had some really nice rolling shot vehicles. We had a 718 Spider and Lewis was driving it. That was a lot of fun. But unfortunately, you know, you never know. That's the thing about testing. You never know if Something with a car, something with the tires, something with the driver. You just never know. The car broke down? Yeah, the car did. Well, I I don't know. We don't know. Maybe a part failed. Um, they they did hit some some marmots or Marmot? prairie dogs or whatever they did yesterday during testing, and they had to fix all that stuff. Uh, and that's kind of the thing. That's kind of where our experience comes to play. You know, we we shoot here a lot. We know a lot of the corners here. And the point is we want to maximize, you know, just the minimal runs that that they're going to do. Because during testing, you just never know what's going to happen. And we just know right off the bat, in the beginning, we have to get some shots in the bag. So at least we have something to show for in case something like this happens. You know, we did go up to 16 mile and we were able to get two passes up there, you know, which is not too bad. But um, of course, one more pass would have been amazing. I really, really, really wanted it. my icicle shot. Three more would have been amazing. Yeah, three more, well, four more would have been more, more amazing. Um, but yeah, Lewis, what do you think? Um, it was all right. I would rate myself a solid B plus or an A minus. It would have been higher, but uh, the car didn't really do as many runs as we expected or uh, wanted. Um, so we predicted that, um, well, not really predicted, we kind of guesstimated that it was only going to make two to three passes once we got up there. So we kind of planned for the worst and then Larry and I split up. Uh, I went to the first leg right after double cut and Larry kind of went to the top where Devils is at. Is that where he went? Yeah, 16 mile. Yeah, 16 mile. And then uh, basically we snagged as many as we could, but there's definitely room. There's definitely room for more during the race week, I feel like. So that'll be pretty interesting. So this was also the very first time we've done testing uh, for just one car. It's a single car test session. Um, they rented out the entire mountain and uh, the driver, Romain Dumas, was doing uh, full runs or almost full runs throughout the day, uh, which allowed us to move between different sections of the mountain. So normally on test days or practice days uh, during the race week, there, the mountain is split up into bottom, middle, and top sections, but we were able to move between the, the separate areas. Usually when you're like shooting the race or the practice days, you're locked into wherever area you're at. I mean, if you want to go to the next area, you can walk, but I mean, at 14,000 feet of elevation, that's kind of like impossible. Unless you're superhuman, then maybe. I don't know. It was cool. It was cool. I, I got to shoot at like places where I don't usually shoot for the race, so that was interesting. So I like that a lot. What would you What would you rate yourself today, Larry? Uh, probably B, B plus. Fail. C minus. C. I don't know. F plus. Something. Something. An effort. Else, something. There was an effort. Luis, how would you rate yourself today? Uh, C. C. Why? Why C? 
tried getting some hat shots, didn't get a lot of good ones. Oh, you, you got some get out of here. Got some good like through the tree shots instead. Yeah. Have been through the corners, but I wish I could have gotten more. We had basically laid out like 50 million different plans for how today would end up. Uh, because our you just never know how the day is going to end up, especially on test days like these. So Larry's going to the bottom right now to shoot uh, the livery reveal shots for uh, the team and Romaine. We had initially uh, planned for it to be right by Double Cut, which is like a really, really scenic area. That was plan number one. And then plan number two was to get it shot at 11 Mile, which is a kind of okay looking area that's in the bottom section. And our last resort, which is the plan that we're going with right now, is shooting the reveal photos uh, at the base of the mountain which isn't ideal but I mean it's not an ugly location it's actually kind of nice looking so it's not the end of the world it's actually pretty cool as always Lewis forgot to roll just kidding I forgot to roll so we we just did the uh, shoot down below before they had to pack up they have a lot of things to work on so we couldn't do a very extensive shoot I did get a couple and you know the cool thing about this vehicle is the fact that it has a reflective wrap so then when you hit it with any amount of flash even if you're in broad daylight which we were just now for this shoot I just put the flash to full power and then it just had a kiss of light on it it, it just really brought out the livery way more in terms of in terms of uh, the colors so you'll you'll definitely see that and I think they'll use those for the livery reveal shots. Overall, I'm pretty happy with what we got for how little runs we got. Uh, what do you think? What do you think, Leaf? It was awesome. So, so did you like Rochambeau with Romaine to see if you could drive the car or what, what happened? So I actually walked up and realized the seat is fixed. <laughs> I'm 6'3", and I'm not sure how tall Romaine is, but it would not work. Not with that yeah. attitude. Not, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not with these legs. Yeah, yeah, not but with those legs. Maybe next year. Hey, if Scotto can fit in an 11, you can too. This is very true. Scotto can barely fit in an 11. He basically sits in the back seat to drive his uh, 993. My head's touching like the roof of the minivan. Hmm, that is also true. Yeah, yeah. I can't fit in the... Well, your hair is. You still have like two inches from your forehead to the top of your head. I don't need it. This is my helmet. I take that back. Scotto drives a 965. Bye. That's a wrap.